changes ahead for Xbox and accounting. Happy Friday, friends. It's Friday, which means we're recording, which means I hope you had a wonderful week, which mostly means you're in a good mood. Anyways, it is Friday. We are careening into the back half of August. There's actually only one week left of August, which is these times just keep flying by. And I don't know if it's because my kids started school, I'm getting older, or I'm looking at a bag of grass seed that makes me excited. Uh, <laughs> but whatever. The month of August is flying by, and there is a lot to discuss. So, let's dive into the tech news. Hopefully you had a wonderful week. Here we go. One of the biggest things coming out of this week is this. If you're not on the audio side, I will explain what is on the screen. But Microsoft is changing up how they're going to be reporting some of their accounting slash financial returns every single quarter. And, ah. So I'm not going to dive into every single detail. Intelligent Cloud is not changing. Uh, the one that is more near and dear to my heart, and probably a lot of people listening here, is in the more personal and computing segment. Now, gaming is not changing, but devices is. So Windows and devices are merging into a single business unit, which I think means we're not going to get that surface breakout number anymore. I think this is like Microsoft's, once again, people are getting too close to the actual numbers. So Microsoft is going to be hiding the surface hardware sales going forward under this new category and it will roll up. Now, there's two ways you can make this argument. One is that surface is what used to be like a big thing, a big investment for Microsoft. And so it should be on its own and we should know how much hardware they're selling. Or the other side of it is, and this is probably the stance that Microsoft is taking, is it just doesn't make that much money anymore. So it, it you know, we're a, uh, we make twenty billion dollars in net income each quarter, and here we are, like talking about a, a small fish, and so it doesn't make sense to be on its own, and so we're not going to make it on its own. You call it whatever you want. You can take whatever side of this you really want, but either way, is the days of understanding how much Surface hardware has been sold are dwindling uh, very, very quickly. Other things that are you know worth noting here, Copilot Pro Revenue is previously reported under Office and Consumer Products and Cloud Services is uh, now moving to search and uh, news advertising, which is a little odd, but whatever. Um, and then, like I said, gaming is unchanged. So the interesting thing here is this is going to, I mean, this takes effect on their next reporting. Um, I haven't done this yet, but I believe because they are making this change, they are legally required to go back and restate all prior years based on this new methodology. So actually we could go back and kind of see and get a better look at how this is going to play out for the next release. Speaking of releases that aren't happening currently yet, uh, Microsoft has updated a blog post and says, hey, remember that thing we announced that said was, was coming in June called Recall? Well, it's still coming, but you are going to have to wait until October now. Now, here's the thing. Uh, it, it's very clearly going to be going to insiders first, which means like a general availability of this product is probably quite a ways away, is my guess. I, I hesitate to say this, but I'll say it anyways. I wonder... If it will be a year since its announcement, like in the spring, it was in the spring, right? Yeah, in the spring to when it's actually generally available. We'll see. We will see. But if it's hitting in October to insiders, then there's going to be some uh, testing and blah, 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 blah. And uh, yeah, so there you go. If you dual boot and one of those booters is Linux and it's not working, Microsoft is aware. They they accidentally, they promise you, it was an accident. They broke it and dual booting for some Linux distributions is not currently working. It involves the SBAT setting. If that makes sense to you, you'll know why then it is no longer booting. Uh, things that were announced that not many people picked up on, myself as included, uh, Loop 2.0 is here. Microsoft is like, hey, Loop 2.0, done, shipped, minted. And uh, here we go. So it's got a new in-app notifications, new copy link dialogue, improved ability to add loop components from the breadcrumb trail, meeting notes tabs, favorites and recents tabs, and more. Now this was like a really quiet announcement. I think I looked for a blog post initially and all I could continuously find was just a small little Twitter feed of like the updates from directly from loop. But either way, loop 2.0, living on, it is 2.0. Actually, I don't think it's going to die anytime soon, uh, but 2.0 is now here. 
Other things that have been announced this week, Google Essential is coming to a PC probably near you. Now, this is going to start being preloaded on some devices. I believe HP is taking the first swing at it. And this is going to include things like Google Photos, Google Messages, Google Docs, Google Drive, Google Calendar. And uh, Google One subscribers will get two-month trial of Google One uh, with 100 gigabytes of free, which, wait, I'm a Google all. Oh. And eligible Google One subscribers will get two-month trial of Google One, 100 gigabytes for free. I thought I, I thought if you're paying for Google, you already got cloud storage. Maybe I'm a little wrong there, apparently, or whatever. Um, I do wonder how much Google is going to be paying these providers, right? Obviously, HP is not doing this out of the goodness of their own heart. There's clearly some deal been struck there. Uh, we will wait and see if other vendors follow suit. But don't be surprised if you see more Google apps showing up on a Windows PC in the near future. Now... On to the gaming news, my friends, because it has been a wild and illustrious week in the world of Gamescom. So let's get started first off here. Um, ooh, so new consoles are coming, and, and new in quotations, but they're really just new SKUs of the continued variant. So we've got the, the Series X uh, with 2TB disk drive, $599. that will be uh, coming up in, in mid-August, or mid-August, mid-October. Actually, all these are. Uh, the Xbox Series White one terabyte for 449, also coming in the same time, and same along with the Xbox Series S one terabyte 349. And if you're outside the US, it might be late October. But either way, you can now pre-order these things if for some reason you need another Xbox. None of them like jump out as like, oh, this is a gangbuster deal. Uh, they're all just kind of like, okay, same pricing. Microsoft clearly didn't want to lower the price, or maybe they couldn't. Let's just let that can't rule that out either. But either way, they are coming. Uh, the 599 version with the disk drive just further cements the fact that the disk drive is dead. Now, there's a lot of other stuff going on. There was a, a lot of quotes coming out from Phil Spencer. We all, I'm not going to dig too deep into the nitty, nitty gritty. There's lots of content I've put up this week about everything coming out of Gamescom. But I want to hit the highlights of what Phil Spencer has gone through and what Microsoft has announced this week at Gamescom. Um, I, Xbox exclusives are just going to be timed. Just get used to that fact. Get used to that fact that they will be timed. And by timed, I mean, that's how long it will take them to get to PlayStation. We should be the way you think about it because it's not timed until it comes on PC. It's not timed until it comes to cloud gaming. It is quite literally timed and probably until it lands on PlayStation. So all Xbox exclusives going forward, just expect them to be timed. And if it is truly only an Xbox exclusive, then be happy. But, you know, that isn't exactly what Microsoft said. But the fact that Indiana Jones is going, the fact that we know that Forza, I believe Forza Horizon is going, uh, it's just a matter of time before Microsoft or slash Xbox puts all this stuff on PlayStation to make more money. Uh, X, Phil Spencer very made it very clear. He goes, Xbox is a business and they need to make money after buying all these studios. So just kind of get used to it. In my opinion here, the best reason to buy an Xbox anymore is Xbox Game Pass. I will continue to die on the hill that that is currently, I use the word currently, the best value in gaming to get access to all of these titles. Yes, there are a lot of games coming to Xbox. Just because they land on PlayStation doesn't mean they're not coming to Xbox. Although Towerborn landing in Steam before it lands on Xbox is a little funky. Either way, there's a lot of games coming and Xbox Game Pass continues to be the best way for it. The reality here, based on what Phil Spencer is saying, is that the market is changing. I, I really believe that Xbox is making the hard decisions today to try to survive another 20 years. Now, you might say, what do you mean, Brad? Try to survive. They're Xbox. They've got Microsoft. Like, Microsoft is a business. If Xbox isn't pulling its weight, they will make drastic changes. And this is Xbox aligning itself, making the tough decisions today, which, granted, I acknowledge personally and everybody else in the community feels a little awkward because the historical precedence is you got to have Xbox exclusive to sell Xbox consoles. Um, but the reality is that's not the path that Microsoft is taking. I, I kind of believe that they firmly have looked at the numbers and say, look, console sales are like PC, like not PC consoles, but consoles that sit under the TV are like at a plateau and like they're not growing in a rate that is sustainable for the number of con for the number of money that Microsoft has spent. So it's like, how do we get access to more consoles so that all of these 70, $80 billion we've spent makes a lot of sense. Well, we got to put it in more places and we are a business and that's just what we're going to do. And as long as people are buying our games, then we are making more money at the end of the day. There's not a lot of money in hardware. I don't think Microsoft is leaving the console space. I, I will say that a lot. However, they are just putting their games on all consoles, which is something that they do 
um, going forward. I also believe that the next generation console is going to be much more closely aligned to a PC than not at the end of the day. This generation is already really, really, really close. I think going forward, we're going to continue to see that evolution because, hey, if it's easier to build one game and have it run in multiple places, that's the path that Microsoft's going to take. And just remember that Xbox OS is a hypervisor that runs on top of Windows, and that's what you need to know. Also coming out, I don't know if this is officially out of Gamescom, but there's new adaptive joysticks. This stuff is awesome. Also that controller you see there, which looks super cool. It actually reminds me of like a, an old um, NES, Super Nintendo controller to some degree. Um, it, by, it made by 8BitDo, I think 8BitDo, 8BitDo, I don't know. I, I'm terrible with enunciation. But there's also 3D printable adaptive thumbstick triggers and a whole lot more in the Xbox Design Lab. This stuff is always super cool. And also Microsoft says Black Myth Wukong is coming to the Xbox Series X and S, but they can't announce a date. Uh, that sounds like maybe Sony's bought up some, uh, some IP rights there potentially, which is why things aren't being announced. Um, but it is coming. Hopefully it's because somebody bought the rights and not because uh, there's been a lot of rumors and content flying around that's like, it's hard to get your game on Xbox. And so, yeah, there you go. All right, the questions of the week. We know the best part is here. Matt Bear says, hey Brad, where to start? It has been a bad PR week for Xbox despite the strong showing at Gamescom. If we take a step back and look at how Sony is doing, we see that they're doing... Uh, they're having similar results. I mean, it's very true that Sony is having hard times selling more consoles as well. Now, those numbers are going to get a bit blurred here when the PS5 Pro come out. I, I firmly believe, I've said, I think I've said firmly believe too many times on this podcast, but I firmly believe that the console sales for the PS5 Pro are primarily going to be to people who already have a PS5. So yes, Sony's console numbers are going to go up. They're going to sell more hardware and they're going to have great percentage growth because of this. But the actual net gain of new players who are then going to buy more games is actually probably remaining relatively uh, stable. Do you think Microsoft is, and this is from Matt Abair, says, do you think Microsoft is making uh, Xbox put first party titles a permanent requirement? I, I think that's going to be the standard going forward. I think the standard's going to be, it's going to land on Xbox, there'll be some amount of time, and then it'll land on PlayStation. I do. The reason I ask uh, is listening to Xbox content creators, there is some speculation that this is happening in order to pay off the ABK acquisition. I, well, I think that's pretty clear. Uh, as soon as possible. Another theory is that Microsoft is trying to make Xbox kill the console. I don't think Microsoft is trying to kill the console. I don't, that would be, M Microsoft, Microsoft and Xbox do dumb things. Everybody does dumb things. Every company does dumb things. Kill, like, killing the console would be very dramatic and bad for the Xbox bottom line. I, I don't think, I, I would be very surprised if they killed it off in the next few years. Like that is, that seems absolutely absurd. I don't think that's it. Now paying off the ABK acquisition. Yeah, that is definitely part of the equation. You cannot go to your corporate overlords, the board of directors and say, I need $80 billion over a couple of years to buy up all these studios and not have them asking every time you sit down, it's like, hey man, where's the money, man? Where's the money? And if you're not familiar with that uh, family guy, it's like, where's my money, man? That's like, that's where, <laughs> that's where they're at. So Mr. PKI dropping a double dose of questions. He says, do you have one of the new Surface Copilot PC laptops yet? And are they great school laptops for the kids? I, I do not have one. I have not bought one. Um, I'm not quite encouraged yet to buy one. I will probably eventually pick one up. We'll see. Actually, I should say uh, my work, Stardock has one. We use one at Stardock. And so is it a good back to school laptop? I would think it's fine. It's not, it depends. It depends what you're trying to do. It, I think is the, the qualifier here. Like if you're like a note taking, just generalist computer person. Yeah. I think the arm stuff is great. And actually I think it's probably perfectly fine. If you're a high end user needing like blender and visual studio and gaming, you might want to just stick with the tried and true uh, classic, maybe an Intel, an AMD, an Intel, a Wintel, an AMD. <laughs> I could not figure out. My brain was thinking AMD. My mouth said Intel, but I was going to say, maybe pick up an AMD box. Uh, might be a slightly better solution just because there's some funkiness with the latest gen Intel chips until they ship their new round, which might be fixed or not. Although I say that, and then Zen 5 also doesn't really have huge performance gains on the AMD side. So maybe not buy anything. Maybe, maybe what you got is good enough. Uh, Mr. PKI with the second question. I saw a report that 343 was hiring generative AI leads to help with game development. Are we going to start seeing a wave of story and content DLC appear in the future? I do not know if it's going to be a, a 
at this point, you got to assume that every company is exploring AI. Um, AI art, AI storytelling, it can all be done if you do it right. Uh, I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying every company should do it, but it's definitely part of everybody's equation at this point. Actually, uh, what was it? EA said uh, NCAA football 25, 2K25, uh, this year's version, which is new or whatever. They said they wouldn't have been able to get it done without AI. So, you know, take that for what it is. Rambono5 says, two questions. He says, what is the timeline for a refresh of a current Xbox model versus next generation of the Xbox? I'm still on the one and looking to upgrade in the next year. If you're looking to upgrade in the next year, I don't think there's going to be a refresh. I don't, I don't, I really don't think there's going to be. The, the consoles that are releasing this fall would be it. The reason why I don't think there's going to be a refresh is what's the point? If PlayStation and Microsoft, I've talked about this before, Microsoft did the Xbox One uh, X, and they know how many people and which people will actually buy the upgraded model. And it's probably the same people who already have an existing console. And so you're not growing the user base. You're just reselling hardware to the same people. And if there's not a lot of margin in hardware, it's a risk not worth taking. Um, for the, so really, I think you're looking at next gen console, which I believe is 2027 or 2028 would be the most likely scenario. So right now I would just be, uh, keep your eyes and ears open for a good holiday season because as those old consoles are being phased out, that usually means there's like good black Friday deals and, and holiday deals as these new ones land in October. His second question says, are you using iOS 18? I am on my iPad, but not on my iPhone yet. They have a password app. I'm wondering what are your thoughts about moving from one password to the password app? So I'm not going to move to the Apple password app because I use things like I, I use other devices. I use PCs a lot. I mean, I literally make software for Windows for a living. And so I, it's not that it's, I know I, I'm almost positive they're bringing it over to Windows. However, I'm, I'm, 97% happy with one password. There's some funkiness that I don't love. Uh, and I try not to marry my whole password setup to a single um, OS, if that makes sense. So I, I'm not intending to do that. One password has been good to me and I will continue to support them until uh, they annoy me too much. And then if I'm moving to anything, honestly, it's probably ProtonPass. They've made some good and interesting moves. They, they need to, their latest version, which I actually looked at is good, but it's not, it's not on one password great yet. So give it a little bit of time, and I think Proton Pass will be a very viable solution for many people going forward. Mad Thinus says, there is really just one question this way. When is Starfield coming to the PS5? Sorry, I take that back. I have another question, which the question, I mean, it's kind of valid now, is like, would Starfield end up on PlayStation? I don't know. We will see. Um, I have another question. Why have they not been honest from the start with these titles? Indie was always coming to the PlayStation 5. You cannot port a game in three months. I agree. So they had to they had the port cooking the whole way, probably. Yeah. So there was some, uh, if you go, you have to go back to the trial about them buying ABK. And there was talk that like Indie was in development for PlayStation. And then Microsoft just kind of like pushed it aside. And then obviously Mad Thinus is correct. They cannot port a game from scratch from Xbox to PlayStation in three months. It has been in develop in parallel the whole entire time. All they've done for the last six months is generate bad news cycles for them. Are were they looking like liars in your opinion? I, you know, calling them a liar is, I think this has just been the plan. I, I really do. I think Microsoft sat down when they were looking to buy ABK and said, look, there's not money in hardware. We can sell hardware and basically break even, but we got to find ways to sell more software because software is what Microsoft knows. Microsoft knows that there's a lot of margin in software. And so at the end of the day, they said, how are we going to sell more software in gaming? It's more studios, but we're not just going to sell it to our own direct customers. We're going to broaden the appeal and sell to all gamers across all mediums. And so the, it's a joke, but it's not really a joke. Microsoft's just becoming a publisher. Well, they primarily are. I mean, if you look at the revenues that they make, they are way more of a publisher now than they are of a console seller. Uh, again, I don't want to say the console is going away. I think that would be a very disastrous PR move. Granted, the financials, the financials could make sense for them. I mean, they're like, look, if we get rid of all the hardware and we just sell on PlayStation and Steam and that's it like yeah what i really what i truly honestly think is going to happen is that xbox will just become another launcher and it'll be a launcher on your console and it could potentially also have steam and right those rumors have been floating around it's like how would that work well it's like your your box under there is really just a lightweight pc it's like just launch steam just launch xbox right on the pc just launch xbox microsoft has enough content to be their own launcher. I know Steam is the de facto platform, but look guys, Call of Duty will suck a whole generation, a whole population into the Xbox app. It's a risk that 
Microsoft might take on the PC. We will see. We will see. So there you go, guys. That wraps it up. One more week down. Congratulations on making it to the end of the podcast. Make sure to keep it subscribed here because only BS on this podcast is me.